right, let's talk about cognitive development in emerging adulthood. And sometimes people are surprised, like, oh, I thought we were done with our cognitive development once we graduated high school. No, absolutely not. You are still developing thinking skills or have the opportunity to develop your thinking skills. And some people have proposed a, a type of thinking. It can almost be seen as like a proposed fifth stage of development that you could add on to Piaget's four stages of cognitive intellectual development, or it could just be its own separate thing. But this is post formal thought. Remember formal operational thinking, that's when you gain the ability to think abstractly, to think logically. With post-formal thought, this is uh, something that adults can achieve with the right experiences, the right encouragement, the right classes and other types of experiences, and it goes beyond uh, formal operational thinking. It is more practical, more flexible, more dialectical, and less impulsive and reactive. Uh, one is more capable of combining contradictory elements because that's one thing you learn with real world experience. Sometimes two things do not seem to go together. They don't seem to make sense, yet they're both true. So you're more able to combine contradictory elements into a comprehensive whole. You're like, okay, so things are not all black and white. Things are complicated. You can handle that much better when you are in post formal thought, post formal thinking. And so people who are post formal thinkers, they can use formal analysis to learn science, to fully understand science, not just memorize definitions. It breaks my heart when I hear that somebody had some science classes where they were encouraged to do nothing more than memorize definitions. Yeah, that's part of the class. But truly understanding science is being able to understand the concepts, to understand how those things are related and how we study that and how we know that they're related. And so they can learn science, fully learn and understand science. They can distill principles, develop arguments, be a thinker, not just a memorizer, not just someone who parents parrots, parrots what their teacher or professor says, but someone who can think, who can understand and think and explain. They can resolve the world's problems, hopefully. Uh, they are less impulsive and they do not wait for someone to present a problem to solve or for circumstances to require a reaction. They are thinking, thinking ahead, waiting for the right opportunity to have to think about problem solving, right? And not everybody is gonna get here. We hope that college is gonna make you more of a post-formal thinker. And there is evidence that higher education, college, what we call higher education or tertiary education, because primary education was like your elementary school years, secondary education like middle school, high school, tertiary education is your later college type of experiences. And not everybody goes to a four-year university, but those additional educational experiences. And so the, the idea, the original idea with college, with university studies, because different countries refer to it differently. Other places you go to university. In the United States, you go to college, all right? But we higher education experiences. The original idea was to make you a better thinker, to make you a more well-rounded person, to have knowledge in a variety of fields, a variety of areas, to basically equip you for better thinking in many different areas. Nowadays, most people go to college for very practical reasons. They have goals like, I want a job. I would like to make more money than someone who does not go to college. That's why I'm going to college. All right. No shame on you if those are your goals. You are very common. You are very typical. People need money. There's no shame in focusing on money. So most contemporary students uh, attend college primarily to se secure their vocational and financial future. They want a job and they want to be able to make money. They are not necessarily thinking about becoming a well-rounded person. They are not necessarily thinking, I can't wait till I develop those critical thinking skills. It's more like, I want to have a good job. Thank you. I want to be comfortable. Right? Uh, we do see that attending college is correlated with a lot of uh, positive outcomes, like better health. People who go to college are healthier. 
Now, some people with health problems and various disabilities have said, hey folks, we have to address that sometimes that finding could be at least be partially explained by the fact that if you are unhealthy in a variety of ways, you may not get to go to college. Many colleges have some sort of system in place for having accommodations for students with disabilities, but some do a better job than others of actually following through, of understanding the needs of students with disabilities, particularly with rare disabilities or disabilities that require more intense intervention. And so some folks, they, you know, they'll say, yeah, I would have gone to college um, if it was possible for me to get to the classrooms, if it was comfortable for me to sit in the seats that were available in the classroom, um, um, you know, if the professors actually excused my absences for medical treatment, some of them didn't. There lots, of, lots of barriers in the way of individuals with less physical health. Um, but in general, you do have that correlation. People who go to college are healthier. Maybe it's because they, learn, they take classes that cover health. Maybe they're just more educated in general. We do know that the higher socioeconomic status is correlated with health. Higher socioeconomic status is, is correlated with actually going to and finishing college. So that, you know, those, that could possibly ex partially explain those findings. Uh, college graduates smoke less eat better, exercise more, and live longer. Again, it could be because they take classes where they learn about why you should do that. Or it could also be explained by other factors that are correlated with those, but definitely you see correlations. People who go to college, and especially if they finish college, they are just healthier in a variety of ways. Um, related to learning, if you go to college, you typically have better verbal and quantitative quantitative abilities, that's your language and math abilities essentially, not surprising. Uh, knowledge of specific subject areas, again, not surprising that it would be better. Skills in various professions and reasoning and reflection. So there are a variety of benefits or at least advantageous correlates of college attendance. Now some people have pointed out that one of the really great things about going to college is you typically have to meet a lot of people. You mean a diverse group of people. And even if you go to a college that's not particularly diverse, it's often more diverse than like your hometown. It's, you know, that a lot of times people go to college and in addition to the coursework, it's an opportunity to meet people who are different than you. I remember when I was in college, I had a roommate from a tiny, tiny town and she was shocked. She says, I met a Jewish person today. And I'm like, what do you mean? I don't, I don't get the, what do you mean? You never met a Jewish person before? She's like, no. And I'm like, wait, you're 18 years old and you've never met a Jewish person before? Because I had been from in urban and suburban areas. And so for me, there was more diversity in my schools. It never occurred to me that there were people who hadn't met people who were, you know, of various religions. And she was like, it was weird. I'm like, well, how, was, how was it weird? What did they, they're like, it was just weird. They were like, I'm Jewish. And I realized I never met somebody who was Jewish before. I'm like, just wait. <laughs> there are lots of people on camp. I mean, this was a, this, actually this campus is ranked, the campus where I went for undergrad, uh, was ranked as one of the more diverse, con divorce, try again, diverse, diverse campuses in the area. So I'm like, just wait, you're going to meet lots of people you never met before. Um, and so this is a benefit. This, this is probably a good thing that you get to meet people who are different than you, all right? Because discussion among people of different backgrounds, ages, and experiences leads to intellectual challenge and deeper thought. Now, some people get really concerned about folks going to college. Like a lot of parents or people giving advice to parents, like, look, if you go to college, they're going to indoctrinate them. They're going to tell them to think a certain way. And college actually does not do that. You are not told how to think. You're presented with more information than you typically had before. Your own mind, your own thinking is what's responsible with figuring out what to do with that information. And the thing is, a lot of people, they go and they meet these other people and sometimes they gain a greater appreciation for how they were raised or what their values were that they were exposed to. Sometimes they get a greater appreciation for, oh, now I understand why my religion taught me that one thing or my parents taught me that one thing. It now makes sense. 
other times people do learn from other people and they say, wait, now I'm questioning things. I'm questioning things and I'm starting to doubt whether I'm going to be on the same path as my parents thought that I would be, you know, that sort of thing. When that happens, it's not from the college telling you what to do. That is antithetical to what college is supposed to be. They give you the info, but it's your brain, your thinking, your thought processes that turn that information into any kind of change. All right. It's the thinking that does it. All right. So maybe some people who object to college, they're really objecting to thinking. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, and those who are most, most likely to be post formal thinkers are also those with the most friends from other backgrounds. So it's good to be friends that are friends with people from lots of different backgrounds that are different than you. Or if, if, if you value being a post-formal thinker. If you don't care about that, then maybe, maybe that won't sell it to you. All right, let's talk about some other issues with college. Freaking expensive. Even cheaper colleges are expensive, and they've gotten more expensive in recent decades. All right, and if you ask people, most adults believe college is too expensive. 94% of parents expect college-bound children 75% of all adults believe college is costly. It's one of those things like, yes, I'd like my child to go to school, but it's freaking expensive. And we have all, if you've been paying attention, you've probably heard that a lot of people go into debt for a long time from going to college. Um, partially because a lot of times it, it is sold as, oh, okay, you, it's okay, the, the price is a lot, but you can get loans. But the loans have interest, and sometimes over time, you end up paying, you know, so much for that original loan. Um, it's, it can be very costly. Even people who have scholarships, they still have to acquire their books. They still have to have a place to live during this time, which depending on how far away they are from their home, you know, they may need to get an apartment or live in a dorm or something. And that costs money too. I mean, just college has other expenses beyond tuition. Tuition, tuition is a lot, uh, but other things are expensive too about college. It is expensive. We cannot ignore that reality. Because some folks don't go to college or don't finish college because it's just too much money. Who can, who wants to take on that much debt? All right. Um, generally, college pays off over time for most graduates. Overall statistics are discouraging because some folks end up in serious debt. And it's really bad if you didn't even get to finish that degree. You know, you are paying off that debt for a degree that you did not earn. Please, all of you in my classes, get your degree. <laughs> get your degree. Get the payoff that comes from having that actual degree. Um, so we do see, uh, let's see, so graduating has additional benefits. Attending college does have some, some positive correlates, but you also get additional benefits from actually finishing, from graduating, from getting the degree. Um, Another alarming thing is we see that some of the most popular colleges have really low graduation rates. Maybe people go there because they want to party, they want to have life experience, and they don't necessarily focus on the career aspects of things. And we know that student loan payback is, it's always been kind of bad, but it's gotten worse. And so there are lots and lots and lots of stories of folks paying off huge amounts over a long period of time. Um, I'm in my 40s, uh, getting closer to 50 these days. But you know, I'm in my 40s, and I no longer have student loans to pay off. But I have classmates from graduate school, you know, people and they, they did get more than one degree, they were in graduate school. I've talked to some folks recently who are still paying off their loans from college, you know, for degrees they got when they were in their 20s. So if you can avoid the loans, you know, but many people, they're like, I can't go to college without the loans. I don't have this money just sitting around. All right. So there are benefits to college, but there are definite, some definitely serious practical issues that have to be addressed. Okay. I think that, yeah, that's the end of the... Cognition in college videos. We're going to throw in some social stuff. We're going to throw in Erickson next.